Morning guys. It is Sunday and it is May 21st. Yeah, I think so. And it's time to do a video and I have a new phone so I'm going to keep looking the wrong way from time to time because my camera is now here and it used to be there. So and I hope the sound is okay today and the image is okay because this is my first time using this phone for filming. But we're going to find out. And let me think if there was anything else I wanted to say. Uh, no. So Andrea, I hard cross stitch. If you don't want to be tempted, look away now for a second. Cheers everyone. Yeah, it's okay to look back now, Andrea. <laughs> Sorry, just, just a little joke because of her last video. And I'm noticing that there is a lag on the video image showing on my phone and that's throwing me off a bit. So let's see how we go. Um, yeah, grab uh, your stitching because uh, I have a suspicion this is going to be another long video. Apparently I can't do short videos anymore because there's bunches and bunches of things lying on my couch. So let's just get on with it. Um, notes. So mania happened. Uh, for some people it's still happening. I don't do mania. I don't think I ever will do mania. I just, it's not for me. I like to spend time on my new starts, not just a few stitches and that's it. So, but I had a lot of fun. It was mania for me too, to try to keep up with all the videos you've all been pushing out, which is awesome. Um, sort of managed, not completely. <laughs> but yeah, that was a lot of fun and some people are still going. So good luck to you. I hope you get through to the end. All right. Um, I had my own sort of mania the last two weeks. I've worked um, on a few finishes and I've, I've done some fully finishes, but I'll talk to you about that in a bit. So uh, first things first, before I forget, in my last video there were some people asking about these and I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. and. I did dug out the kits, crinkle crinkle, so the grey one is this kit, it is a Paco kit number 003.266 and trying to see it was from 2013. It's actually a Dutch company, so I'm not sure if it's easily available outside of the Netherlands, but here you go. So that was the grey one, and the red one in the front is another kit, and that is by Vavaco, which is a Belgian company. I'm trying to see if there's a number on it. Uh, yeah, which one do I have? Oh yeah, so I have number 1200 slash 116 and here you have a few of the other numbers. Hope that is showing up. But yeah, they have a series of different Scandinavian inspired designs for pillows. This one was from, I think something like 2014. Because I got them when they first came out, trying to look. No, I can't see it on the package, but something like 2014, 2013, something like that. And again, not sure if, yeah, Faveco I think is available more easily uh, abroad. Because I've seen some people have kits uh, from the United States and things like that. So. That's out of the way. Andrea, fair warning. 
Um, news. Awesome news. Because Arlene Cohen, who we all know and love, has opened her Etsy store with designs by Arlene Cohen. And it's the Etsy store, I have to look, is called Works by ABC. Go check her out. She has some wonderful designs, I think seven in total. And go have a look and you can get PDF uh, designs as well as paper version. And she'll be happy to work it out with you and check out her latest video. I think it's number five where she talks about her designs. That was really nice. So do you get a bit of background behind them? Yeah, and there's a poem that I had to get. So yeah, I've got another thing in my stash of patterns that I need to start someday. So good luck, Arlene, and uh, everybody go check out her Etsy store. Uh, before uh, I go on, um, let's just talk about my giveaway. Uh, this is not going to be part of this video. I'm going to make a separate video for the drawing because I'm going to do that while this probably long video is loading up to my laptop for editing and in the meantime I can do the drawing. So probably the drawing of the giveaway will be up on YouTube before this video. But in case it doesn't, just giving you a fair warning that if you're interested, interested in that, in the results, then go watch a different video. <laughs> anyway, um, so after all that, I have had a wonderful two weeks of stitching and working as well. Um, we had Mother's Day. Uh, but before that I discovered I wouldn't I had some square uh, finished pieces that I needed I wanted to frame and it was hard finding the right size for them I think we talked about this cozy egg I think she talked about this a little while ago it's hard to find square frames of a certain size at least over here because the small ones are okay up to 20 centimeters i can get them pretty easily and then it jumps to 50 centimeters and i wanted 30 so i wanted not too small not too big something in between anyway that was hard to find and then i i really wanted i needed a piece to, to finish the mother's day present and I went online looking for just typed in 30 by 30 uh, photo frames and a new site popped up that I hadn't seen before, <coughs> which is in Belgium and also shows uh, the Netherlands. It's called Arts and Craft. I'll, I'll add a link in the thing. That was actually a very nice site. They do all kinds of stuff, but they all have a large selection of photo frames in within also the 30 by 30 range. And they were quite decently priced. And as I needed a few uh, frames anyway, I also had uh, ordered some backup frames in case I didn't like the color that I figured I could always use in something else. And I needed a frame for a few other things that I plan to finish. So in the end, I got free shipping. So awesome. And just to show you an example, this is one of the spare ones. So this is a 30 by 30 frame that they have. And it comes with glass and comes with two mat boards. I don't know if you can see that, but one colored one and a white one. And then there's a nice little accent with aluminum in the frame itself. This one comes in different colors. I have one in dark gray, which I use for the perennial border and in dark brown, which I use for the patient stitcher and only eight bucks, eight bucks. So definitely worth it. Just so you know. So I got those in so that I could finish the perennial border because Mother's Day was last weekend, yeah, and I wanted to give that the perennial border to my mom and I framed it and it turned out really well. Uh, I use uh, pin, uh, the pin method on Matboard, which Tara C has a, a good tutorial on. If you haven't seen her, I will try and remember to link her in the 
description box, but that's basically how I learned how to frame. And she uses a uh, silky sliver to uh, make a frame. That was my other PC, if you heard that. She uses a, a silky sliver to, to uh, map out the, the borders of her design that she wants to frame. I use the method that Varna showed where you uh, actually uh, cut out one thread and take that out so you see the frame. I'm not sure in what tutorial she showed that, but it's one, it's one of her finishing tutorials where she showed that. That was really helpful for me. Uh, so I did that and I made a little video about it, I think. So I'll try and look that, that up and insert that here. Hey guys, it is Saturday, May 13 and tomorrow is Mother's Day. And I managed to get this framed. So I thought I would give you a last look before I hand it over to my mom tomorrow. And I'm really pleased with the frame actually. It was actually a Belgian online store that I got these from. It came with the double mat board. And I like this little detail on it. They have This is a dark gray frame. And I wanted to keep it simple because I wanted the focus to be on the stitching and not on the frame. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I pinned it and then stuck it in and it's looking great and I'm happy. And I hope my mom is happy with it too. But yeah, just wanted to show it to you guys. Bye. If I can't find it, then <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> but yeah, I think I still have that. Um, so I did, I, f I framed that and I gave it to my mom and she was really pleased. And she immediately went to the chimney and took off the photo of her grandchildren. <laughs> And put up my uh, stitching, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, she loved it. So that was really nice. And then I also framed a patient stitcher because that has been sitting around for quite a while, uh, unfully finished. And that was why I, how I discovered it was hard to find the right frame. <clears throat> so I, when I uh, pinned the perennial border, I also pinned patient stitcher. And if you can't remember, I looked up the pattern again. I think this is an out of print pattern, but it is by uh, Tempting Tangles. If you, it's called patient stitcher. And I used different threads in it, but, and I can't remember what fabric I used, I think 28 count dune or something. If you really want to know, just leave a question. But yeah, I framed this in uh, one of those uh, with the double mat um, board uh, frames, but I left out the mat board. For this, it was too big. To have a mat board around it, I thought. But yeah, I love this. This is actually a dark, very dark brown frame with again the little metallic detail on it. But for this, I I, I wanted something that wouldn't distract from uh, the piece, and the piece already is quite busy with a floral border in it. But yeah, I love it, and it hangs right above my stitchy spots. I did try to film that, but I had problems with the light coming in from the windows and you couldn't see anything, it was just all a dark mess. So yeah, I already had two frames in the bag and another sip of coffee. Um, then I had that fabric that I ordered, the chintz fabric. Uh, uh, with the ancient or the ancient with the 18th century designs and I thought okay let's go ahead and try and make one of those bags for my scroll frames <coughs> and I did and the first one I made uh, I had some trouble <laughs> 
I, first of all, I had trouble finding a, a, a zipper foot in my mom's sewing machine supplies and talked to my mom about it and she basically said, well, I don't think I have one. I just used my regular foot and moved the needle all the way to the left or to the right. So I gave that a shot. The first time I messed up a bit, so the, the, <laughs> the zipper isn't perfect and I'm not sure if I'm going to pick it out. But what I did is I... Uh, I used uh, batting, the, the thin batting, just, just to make it stiff on both fabrics in the lining and on the outside. And that was just, in the end, that was too stiff <coughs> to work with easily. So I struggled a bit getting it together, but I got it together and it's working and I've got one of my frames in there. But then I thought, well, need to rethink that and do it again. So I did it, uh, a practice run yesterday yeah yesterday yeah yeah yesterday and this one is turning out a lot better so ta -da. here's my bag it's just i followed a tutorial on youtube don't know if i remember who's exactly but i just needed information on how to insert the zipper which is in the end pretty easy to do but yeah it is just four pieces of uh, fabric i don't know if you can see that there's a lining in there four pieces of fabric and then you insert the zipper into that and you turn it inside outside in to get it back together again if you if you sew a bit you know what i'm talking about if you don't you have no idea but go watch the tutorial just look up a tutorial about zipper bags or something i, I think i used that and it came up with like hundreds of sewing tutorials but yeah this uh, was a lot better than the first try actually this zipper closes easily also because the other one i i, I sewed a bit too tight to the zipper so some parts the fabric can get caught in the zipper but yeah, I'm really happy with this. On this one, I only used uh, some Vlieseline, some stiff, uh, stiff batting on the outside fabric. On the inside, there's no batting, and that was a lot easier, easier to manage. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. And I still have a lot of things to do, but getting there. At least now I feel more confident that I can actually do it with not too ugly of a result <laughs> uh, so then my birthday was last thursday and i had an amazing birthday super fun i had all, all, uh, i had thought i would have to go and work in the in the morning uh, but that was cancelled that meeting so I had a lot of free time because in the afternoon all I had to do is wait on some emails to come in and then deal with them. And I did that in about an hour or so. So the whole day I had almost the whole day to be crafty. And oh my, I was crafty. Because I decided everyone is doing all the starts. I am going to do all the finishing. So I finished... Uh, a, f a few things but before uh, but while I was doing that I had some lovely uh, birthday wishes come in on Instagram thank you for all of those who remembered to uh, to send me some that was awesome really nice to wake up to that and I had a very special surprise from I think your name is Anne your first name uh, Tinsley Mumsy on Instagram yeah she actually uh, messaged me and showed me a finished little um, cross stitch piece and I said oh that's nice and she, she made it especially on my birthday and then she said she was she was sending it to me as a birthday gift which I found <laughs> awesome yeah trying not to cry <laughs> again <laughs> but yeah that was really special thank you very much for that and then the mailman came and someone was naughty someone in scotland and sent me a package which i have over here and i didn't remember to blot out the 
But yeah, a lovely package full of beautiful stickers. And when I opened it, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> she sent me a bunch of aperture cards, which I love. Thank you very much. And I can definitely use. So yeah, thank you, Adele. Um, but that was not all because there was a card. I, uh, I'm not going to show the inside, but look at that. That is just the perfect Adele card, right? A cat and mermaid thing. And it's pink. <laughs> and in it, she also added two beautiful Jodhry uh, flosses. Love them. And so thank you very much, Adele. That was a really nice surprise. Um, and when I looked at them, I thought, oh, what am I going to use those for? And then I remembered that I bought those black work designs from uh, the friend of... Uh, All Axis, what's your name? Minnie. Minnie Gray. And I thought these, those will be perfect for that. So thanks Adele. Definitely going to use those. And it was a lot of fun finding out what kind of surprise was sent to me. Um, and X Jew Designs. Uh, she does a lot of fabric dyeing and floss dyeing. And she had a giveaway a few days before my birthday and she announced the winner actually late on May 17th, so close to my start of my birthday, and I won. So I got to pick out six beautiful hand-dyed flosses which are on, my, on the way over here. So that was a good, great start to my birthday. So when they come in I will definitely show those. And what else? So yeah, I did some finishing, which I'm going to show, and I started something because, you know, it's a birthday, i got to start something. And I started the garden party, finally, which has been in my to-start pile for a while now. And here is the start I made, and this is not all one day, uh, let me remind you, this is three days of stitching. <laughs> so no, I'm not that fast of a stitcher. So here it is, garden party on uh, picture this plus fabric, uh, phantom, 32 counts, I think it's a Lugana, I'm not sure, and I don't know, I can't see, I think it's showing up a bit purple, a bit too purple, it's in fact it's more of a dark purple with some splotches of uh, teal and dark purple in it, so dark blue. Um, yeah, I love it. Uh, I started on the bottom part in the middle because I needed to make sure I centered it right because I really had a look at the fabric to see how I could place um, the two ladies so that they would pop. So here the lady with the really white uh, dress is going to go on the, on the darkest bit of the fabric and the other one is going over here and I made sure that the top, which you can't see because it's rolled up, is really dark, has some really dark splotches for the lanterns to pop on those. So yeah, I, I think the border will be not as large as I'm used to because I usually take about a four inch border and this one will be about a two two and a half inch border i think but yeah that'll be fine it'll be enough for framing and if not then i can always add a bit of fabric like trisha the left-handed stitcher once showed us all so yeah that was my start really had fun with that but before i started that i did all the finishing and i'm going to show you first because I had a focus to finish uh, the Christmas tree and, and possibly even the ink circles one. And I did both. The Christmas tree took me three days and I wanted to make it into a wall hanging and I did. And I used a tutorial by Carolyn Mazio. I will try and link all the things and people I reference in the 
description if I don't remind me. But yeah, I made it into a wall hanging and I used a little bit of interfacing on the back and I'm thinking I might have to go back and use some on the front because it's still a bit wrinkly and I really can't, really can't get it out. But yeah, this is it. How cool is that? Give you a close-up of the fabric because I love the fabric and the back is another type of fabric but it, I thought it was a bit too busy to have that fabric on the front. This is more that this blends in with the color scheme of the tree so I like it and I have some how do you call these hooks and now all I need to do is find something to hang it with. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, it'll go in my Christmas stuff, uh, stuff. And yeah, that was really, uh, the tutorial by Carolyn was excellent. And again, pretty easy. Just cut out some strips, stick them together and work it out. The, st the scariest thing was the first time sewing, trying to get it straight. I sort of managed, I think. But enough, enough that you can't really see it if you look at it if you measure it it might be crooked <laughs> and then I framed uh, Cirque de Caro by Ink Circles because I finished that in I think seven days so here's what the pattern is like and I stitched this on a 35 count flow bar over two with my local needle workshops um, thread. And here it is. And I think it is absolutely gorgeous. If I do say so myself. The pinning was a bit tricky, but managed to get it in the end and absolutely love this. It is a lot more stunning than I thought I could ever manage. The frame is perfect for it. It doesn't distract from it at all, but it still has some nice little details in it. And yeah, I love this. The only thing I'm thinking about is that I didn't use any glass because then it wouldn't fit in the frame and the place where I'm hanging it might get some bug action <laughs> so I'm not sure if I should keep it like this or, or try and find a way to add glass to it but yeah love this so then I still had my previous gift from Adele that I finished, the gingerbread house, and I wanted to finish that as a flat ornament, not a flat foil, but just a flat ornament. So I used Von Pfeiffer's tutorial on flat folds, and guess which design she was using <laughs> to make a flat fold in in that tutorial? This one. <laughs> So that was really funny. I could follow her measurements exactly because they were the same. But yeah, it's a not completely straight and not completely perfect. But for my first ornament, I'm happy with it. Here we go. And I showed a picture of this on uh, when I finished this on uh, Instagram. It's a mounted. I don't know if you can see that, but it's mounted on here. And then it didn't have the pompons, the cord, because yesterday I went to my local uh, fabric seller and looked for some nice cording. And this is what they had. And I think it's perfect for it. So I stuck that on yesterday and now I think it's finished. So thanks Adele for the lovely gift and thank you Vonna for the excellent tutorial. And I used, um, I don't have this, uh, the spray glue 
uh, that Vonna showed in her tutorial. I just have the tacky glue and I thought I would just give it a try and see how that works out. And as long as you don't get it on the back, on the nice side of your fabric, that worked out fine for me. I can't see that there's any glue on it. And I just, I really coated this whole back of this mat board and just stuck on the fabric and I can't see anything. I don't feel any bumps. So yeah, I don't have to look for the spray anymore, I think. So another thing for Christmas done. And I think that's all I finished. <laughs> like that isn't enough. Um, but yeah, also I after that or, or yeah after that I did work on no before that I did work on some other pieces. I did some stitching on the hard hanger along uh, because Nina showed how to make uh, one of the borders, so I did that. And that was pretty fast again. Those, those closer blocks are just so fast to stitch up. So this is where I'm at at the moment. I added this whole uh, outside border. Yep. And there was another video from Nina this week, but it was not the next part in the Hardinger long, but it was uh, a little uh, Canadian facts video, which you have to go and look. Stitching with a smile, check out her last video. It is so nice and in interesting. Uh, so I did that. Oh yeah, and then after I finished stitching on Cirque and on the Christmas tree, I had some days remaining and I worked on Takapuna beads because that needed some love. And here that is, I'm not sure, it's upside down. And excuse all the threads because there's just so many of them, but yeah, I worked on the, uh, the sky again. And uh, the sky is not so confetti heavy, well, except for the border, uh, where am I, here? The border along here, that's pretty confetti, but rich, but the rest is really a lot of easy block stitching. And I, I worked on that, and then and at, uh, when I was out of the confetti zone, I decided I wanted to stitch color by color, so I did that for a while. So it's not going diagonal necessarily, but... Because I fig figured, you know, if I know that it's going to be this whole thing, why would I not just do them right, right away right now? So I did, and I still used the basic technique that uh, Brian showed uh, with uh, how many threads are in the hole when you go in or go, come out. But yeah, this was a lot of fun to do. And I reached the uh, top left corner of the pattern and I did bring it, so... I can show you that this was the pattern. So I'm working on this, uh, this sky bit. Yep. So good to see that I got to the other side and I'll be working some more on the sky and then I can, I, I, what I'm trying to do is fill in this bit so that I can roll up my frame and just go back to the diagonal stitching again. Yep. So, that's it. And, how much? Oh, I'm not doing too bad. <laughs> okay, so, um, I have one more thing to talk about, which is the random Dutch fact, but... I forgot to grab something, so I'm going to have to pause and come back in a second. And it's working, yeah, so I'm back. Um, because I wanted to talk about language today. 
and, and you're not going to get a Dutch language lesson. I just wanted to talk about, and I need to get a bit close here, I wanted to talk about the alphabet. And especially the, I think it's the vowels, A, E, I, O, U. Because when I was learning English, those were the ones I struggled with. Because O is not a problem. O in the Dutch is O. So when you have to pronounce, the, to pronounce a word and it has an O in it, I know how it would, should sound. Uh, the U a bit trickier but manageable where I had the most difficulty with was with the a and the e and the I because you say a and we say a ah, which sounds different but then you come to you say e we say a so your e and or a well our a sounds like your a is this getting confusing already <laughs> so you say a and e we say a and a then you get to your i which we call e so you say a e i and we say a a e <laughs> so if, you, if you're starting out learning English, and I learned when I was quite young, I was six, six or seven. Um, and I learned not by reading, because I, I couldn't read a lot at that age. But I learned by listening, so listening to A, A and E sounds. <laughs> And then later, learning how to write them was quite tricky. So that was just a little personal fact. Uh, and I'm going to leave it at that. I think I've managed to get through everything I needed to say. If not, then it'll come next time. Um, I'm going to say goodbye. Have a great uh, stitchy time. I will see you again in two weeks. Well, actually, I will see you again in about 15 minutes. <laughs> because I'm going to do the other video, the drawing. But if you don't watch that, then I'll see you again in two weeks. And I wish you happy stitching. And I hope you're enjoying good weather and good health. And talk to you later, guys. Bye.